Good morning everyone. Today I have something very special. Something you won't see every day and you certainly won't be allowed to disassemble, but I do. Um, as you can see, 22 kg is it is something heavy. And if we look a little bit closer, we can see it is something from Fujitsu, made by Fujitsu and sold by Sun Microsystems. Um, I wrote a little price tag on the cover. You can see it here. Um, this price tag comes from the spare parts price list uh, from 2013. The empty board with no options installed is $117,000 and uh, equipped with all four CPU modules it's $331,000 or a third of a million. Well, <clears throat> that board or that CPU uh, memory module as it is called comes from a Sun M9000 server. Uh, that server is about uh, has the size of a server rack, is 1 meter and 80 high. Weighs about, um, I have a couple of numbers here, weighs about 940 kilos if you uh, choose the 32 CPU model. And if you want a 64 CPU model, it's 1880 kilogram. And the cost for the fully equipped 64 uh, CPU model is about 10 million dollars. Well, that's something you won't see every day and you won't be allowed to take apart. So that's what I do for you now. Let's see what's inside. Uh, there are a couple of funny stickers here. CMU, CPU memory unit. Do not hold the cover. Well, because it weighs a little bit something and if you lift it on the cover, the cover will simply bend. So it's not a good idea. Near to end says this sticker and that's a warning when you pull out the module on its handle and you see that sticker you know you have to flip out the other grip because if you pull a little bit more the module will probably fall to the ground and that is certainly something you don't want to happen. Let's open it. There are two oops two nylon latches here and then the cover opens like that and it's just a flat sheet of metal. And by the way, it is not aluminium, it is stainless steel. Well for that price you can ex expect something special. Uh, there is a piece of plastic. It's like uh, styrofoam, something like that. It's to uh, optimize the airflow around the, the rams, which are here, and the voltage regulator modules for the rams. So, Let's put the camera on the tripod and we will continue to look at this thing. Okay, let's see. What do we get for $330,000? We got four CPU models, modules. Uh, each one of them is, according to the price list, $45,000. I will take one uh, away. 
I'm not sure, maybe if you buy this thing you get a very nice expensive tool to remove that, but it also works without. What I have here in my hands was new $45,000. Yeah. Or two of them equals one new Tesla car. Um, unfortunately, uh, the prices are not the same now. You can buy the entire module on eBay for about $2,000. I saw one. I'm not sure if someone really goes to buy it because with this module alone you cannot do very much. You need also the rest uh, of the system, the box to put it in and so on. Power supplies, fans, number two. And for that price you also get a little bit of gold here on the voltage regulators. You also get a, a couple of nice capacitors and of course you get a, a CPU chip here. You can see it probably. And it's completely uh, gold plated which makes not much sense from the, from the thermal point of view because gold does reflect the, the heat back to the chip but uh, well I think it's not that not a problem number three and number four these connectors are really really uh, uh, good quality and also they are very strong to hold everything in place and of course uh, they don't rely only on the on the connector there are also these safety uh, bars here to make sure that everything stays where it belongs Then we have RAM, a lot of. Uh, there are 32 uh, RAM sockets here, each one populated with a 2 GB module. It's a 5300P module. Uh, PC2 5300P. P stands for parity, so that means they also do parity checks on the RAM just in case one of the bits has fallen out. They can correct that. 32 uh, RAM modules, 2 GB each. According to the price list, they have been $1,000 per piece. So we have RAM for $32,000 here on my desk. Now they are worse, I don't know, maybe two or three bucks per piece. I don't care, I don't sell them. I just take them away and I will recycle the gold fingers. Gold finger! Yeah. Um, so, that's it. 64 gigabytes of RAM in 32 modules. Then we have a bunch of voltage regulators. It looks like they are all the same 
type, say model. Uh, unfortunately, there is not much information about. There is a, a part number. Maybe you find something when you Google for that. There are no voltages, no nothing about power voltage whatever but there is a whole bunch of them let me see no they well they are a little bit different here okay two different types what do we have here we will have we will take a look at it uh, later and a little bit closer they are the same so we have eight of those and six of the others then there are two more modules that look like some sort of DC converter there's also a Uh, a label on it if you want to find out what it is you can do so so what we need to disassemble is a hex screw hex nut three millimeters which makes this screw squeal like a pick that's because of the springs here oops very nice uh, stainless steel screws of course what else we have a funny looking thermal pad here it looks like uh, well, how does it look? Like some little circles. I don't know what that's good for, but it certainly looks interesting. We have a little bit of the thermal mat, or it's not a paste, it's more like a tissue something on the chip. Clean that a little bit. So we have some more screws here. I'm afraid that the teardown itself is not so interesting because there is not very much on this board for all that money. But who knows, maybe this, this thermal paste here is worth $10,000. And I'm throwing it away because it, perhaps it is the most, the best thermal paste you can get. Here we have the same. That one came off without tearing. There is another DC converter. No, it looks a little bit different. It looks more like I don't know a DC regulator or maybe even a DC switch thing. Fujitsu access limited. Well, not micro systems, not food something else for to access okay I don't know what that means but it's a division of Fujitsu I have never heard before sounds a little bit like uh, some key card access stuff but that doesn't look like it I don't know maybe find some technical uh, 
um, um, manuals, but uh, I fear there will not be a lot around. Okay. I think I should keep the screws because they are very nice, perfectly machined. So, more of the $10,000 paste here. And four more screws. And there we have the golden chips. Uh, in my previous video I disassembled a Sun M5000 and probably these are the same golden chips as on the M5000 mainboard. The chips that connect CPUs and memories together. So maybe they have the same function here, but it looks more like they are going towards the, the connectors here, which you can't see at the moment. So there are the nice golden chips. I don't know if the big number is the serial number, they are all different. Maybe we can see the part number like here, yes, MBCS10050. And here we have on the other one, what is that, 10050-90L, ah, it's the same. And here we have 9CL. Ah, okay, it's a C. Is there also a C? Yeah, looks like. Oh, 9CL, yes. It looks like there are four identical chips that go from the CPU sockets, the memories, and then to the interconnect connectors. Um, there is one thing about this board, it is very heavy as you have seen in the beginning, uh, it's about 22 and something kilograms and you should never lift it and put it on this side because you will break these connectors here. That's something I have already done so as you can see they are not soldered they are just um, plugged into the board there are some press fit connectors now if we can see that just a, a row of nails so to speak they just press it into the board and that's it there are oops don't make shadows with the camera so we have whoop, a little bit blurred there we have some plastic from the connector which is broken and the holes where it stuck a moment before So let's see if we can remove the other one too. Yes, without any problem. So if these connectors ever break off, they could possibly easily replaced. Now what I am missing here is some big power connector. I think I have to turn that module around. So I turned it around. We have we can have a look on the connectors here. 
uh, there are no specific power connectors as you normally have on uh, stuff like this it seems that all the power is probably going to the gray connectors I just ripped away because we also have this um, transistors here I guess there are some high power MOSFETs and they are usually uh, used because uh, these modules are hot swappable, hot remove, hot insertable and uh, they need something to cut the power before you actually uh, plug it out completely so normally you have some uh, power pins that are a little bit longer and a little bit shorter so the shorter pins break uh, the connection before the longer pins and that is used to uh, to switch uh, the, the power on and off when you slide the board in and out but probably they have gone uh, a different way so what do we have here some nice caps and some gray stuff some gray chips let me see if I can catch the, the number maybe I can't read it on the display right now but yeah something I guess we will anyway not find a data sheet about them because this is proprietary stuff and by the way they are all soldered to the board so there's no way to remove them or replace them so if something fails on this board you just replace the entire board for of course 110,000 bucks uh, what we have here looks like a flash EEPROM flash uh, memory stuff uh, there is, what is it? it's a little bit difficult in the light here uh, no, I think uh, well, maybe now you can turn your uh, monitor upside down then you can read it it's a little bit, little bit easier than if I turn the camera around now Xilinx Spartan KC what is it 353S 3S2000 okay some sort of FPGA I would say we have a little crystal here I think that's mainly the, the firmware for the board itself because all these components do have uh, a small microprocessor to uh, check and control everything and to make uh, if something doesn't work correctly to uh, tell this to the main processor or to the main uh, environmental monitoring unit or something like that so there is not very much about it this here looks a little bit like a, a current sense uh, circuit we have some big resistors R97 and R96 some diodes assembled in Japan, Japan. Uh, some of the Fujitsu boards I have seen are also assembled in Germany which is quite surprising because the labor cost in Germany is relatively high 
but I think with devices like that that doesn't matter so here is a little detail we have the, the handle to fold out because this is the top side here the front side does also have a handle so you need something to hold the board when you pull it out and if you look at this this is just a, a perfect mechanical construction all made of aluminium and stainless steel what this plate here what's the function of this I don't know I can't see it there is nothing behind there is also nothing on the front no indicators or switches or something like that that's where the CPU modules slide in uh, that works like that they have these little pins here on each side and you slide it in here into, the, into these plastic guides and then you just push it down and the connector is strong enough to hold that in place and there is also this safety catch there is not a le no lever to remove the, bo uh, the CPU module this is just a safety lever to keep it in place and to remove it you need both of your hands I have no idea if I do it right but that way it works so what else could we remove? We can also remove these plastic uh, hooks, clamps, whatever you call it. They are easy to replace in case one breaks and that's a good idea because you don't want to pay 100,000 bucks just if one of these plastic uh, hooks breaks okay well let's have a look on the other parts so these are the voltage regulator modules this is what I would call a voltage switching module because I don't see any transformer or similar stuff uh, then we have two of these, two of those they are very similar I guess they are made for two different voltages so let me see it's the same that's the same as this so we can see front and back side of each module as you can see they made the transformer uh, with the core that goes through the board they made a hole here for the transformer core and uh, the transformer coil is made by uh, copper traces here which are probably gold plated like the rest of the board let's see if we can crack that so let's see. yeah that breaks easily 
it's like a normal ferrite core as you have it in other power supplies but this one goes straight through the PCB so now there's a Mylar foil to insulate everything. I would guess the output voltage here is something between 1 and 2 volts, which goes directly to the CPU. Now you can see the, the coils of the uh, of the transformer primary on one side secondary on the other side or other way around I don't know which is which we also have some coils around here they are most likely for smoothing the output because as you see we don't have any capacitors and that's something that is quite common with uh, high-end, high rel reliable servers. Uh, they try to have as few capacitors as possible. And you can also uh, smooth the, the DC voltage with, uh, with coils. But uh, that's maybe a little bit more expensive. Some why, somehow, so let's see, no, there is only copper underneath. Sometimes I have seen servers where they uh, have gold plating even underneath the, how do you say, um, the solder resist. So they first gold plated everything and then put the, the solder mask on it. Uh, it seems that these times are over and they really just have copper underneath the solder mask which is uh, well logical that's how you do it um, yes the, there's not much about these are the power transistors here, the switching transistors and on this side uh, maybe there are also some diodes could possibly be and of course the circuitry circuits for uh, voltage regulation maybe a feedback transformer possibly yeah it's a uh, quite a lot of stuff here on this board what's that it looks like a pot is it a pot seems so uh, a tiny little pot to adjust the voltage or current or some safety features and you also see these uh, violet uh, marked capacitors as on the as you saw in the video from the M5000, these are um, uh, polymer capacitors. They have a very high uh, quality and also a high price. Let's have a look again at this thermal pad. Looks quite interesting. Maybe this this shape here, this this these circles, uh, they made it to uh, avoid any air pockets, so the air can escape um, between these um, these circles. So now let's go to the heart of the unit, it's the CPU module. There are more DC-DC converters. They look exactly like the other on the board. No, not exactly. There's a little difference. 
also not the same as this one so we have a third type of DC converter these converters are for the CPU alone so as you can see there is a big capacitor marked uh, 330 microfarads 63 volts um, the power supplies delivered 48 volts so I think that's the 48 volt rail that is the input uh, that goes to this DC converter uh, which way around that way around so we probably have the input somewhere here maybe the the big connector here and these are most likely all the outputs positive negative on each side um, the output capacitors here the, the violet ones are 2700 microfarad and two and a half volt so the output voltage is certainly below two and a half volts so my guess is something between one and two volts so let's remove that heatsink you better go over the cross to reduce the stress the mechanical stress to the unit so that one is not but for this unit I don't care about mechanical stress because it goes to the chunk anyway so we have here a different type of uh, thermal compound stuff it's more like uh, it looks a little bit like carbon uh, I think it's graphite and silicone somehow graphite is a very good thermal connect uh, conductor Oops. it is soft and it feels cold so that means it is a good thermal uh, conductor and here we have the most expensive chip gold plated of course what else only the best is good enough let's see if we can catch the number mm, yes I think so we can read it that's a Spark 64 processor Mark 7 most likely it runs on something about 2.8 gigahertz so there is the part number you can look at it on Google and you will find the exact data of this uh, uh, of this module because you cannot remove the chip so you buy the entire module here so what do we have here hunt there is a hunt whatever it means DAC looks like digital to analog converter maybe for the voltage regulator what do we have here DVI dex or shunt there are also some voltage and current sensing devices around here air TCK could be real time clock one. Maybe there is a, a test point for that. No real time clock, no, that makes not much sense. I don't know what it means. 
I don't think they have a real time clock on this board. I square C, ah, there is something, but I don't see any connector to that. But they certainly have an I square C bus. There is a debug uh, connection. I think they have some special connector tools to uh, to hook their test gear here. Noise, something to measure noise, maybe from the power supply on the load. Four amp MPX multiplex something. Some diodes specially marked. Well, and there is the sockets from the voltage regulators, the output capacitors, input capacitor. What do we hear? 1.0 volt. That could be some reference voltage or maybe even the output voltage. There are some more numbers. If someone is interested in numbers, there are a lot of people who want to know everything uh, totally in detail. So, and that's the, the backing plate for the connectors. And here on the back side we have some coils, some capacitors, not really a lot. The backing plate that uh, where the, the screws from the heatsink go to connectors. CPU-C and CPU-B. Where is CPU-A? I don't know. There are only two connectors. Let's go a little bit further with this disassembly. Now we... I will really, really break it. That's something you are certainly not allowed on a working machine. This will most likely break any warranty and any maintenance contract and all of that. And your boss will certainly hate you when you do that. Except it is a machine that comes from the junkyard. CPU C, CPU D, whatever it means. So, no more screws. Yes, it comes apart. Come on. Don't be so sticky. That's the back plate from the heatsink. A little bit of frame, stainless steel of course. And that's the back side of the CPU chip. And it looks very similar to the CPU module on the M5000. That has a reason because it's the same chip. But on the M 5000 you can have up to eight of these chips, four modules with two chips, two CPU uh, processors each. And here you can have eight of these big CPU memory modules with four uh, processors each, four times eight. Uh, 32 processors in one rack and if you need 64 processors 
you can buy a second rack and connect them together yeah that's about it very nice just look at the thickness of the board I mean this does almost this is almost impossible to bend especially if it is fixed to that frame I would say that's about three millimeters wait a minute we can check that it's well yes good guess 3.0 millimeters and uh, well that's just one of the thinner boards of this machine on the M5000 we had some boards with uh, maybe four five millimeters thickness I think I will keep that for something special because this is certainly the most expensive handle I ever ha had in my hands. Yeah. So. some nice parts to keep for another project everything looks like it is specially made for this machine so there are almost no screws or whatever that looks like coming from the shelf everything is custom made calculated machined for this specific machine so isn't that sad such a high-tech machine and everything I want to keep is a couple of handles and some screws well, but what should I do with all these nice chips? I have no idea. I can't use it the way they have been used. So, what do we have here? A lot of capacitors, a lot of resistors not very exciting it's always the same the big brown uh, filter capacitors here a couple of them for each big chip these are the connectors for the CPUs four of them they are also press fit there is no solder uh, at least not on this side but I think on the also on the other side the same here the connectors for the board to the uh, computer backplane no solder just press fit the chips they are soldered I know that because I have already removed one from another board 
and that's very very hard to remove them because look at the board look at the thickness of that board let me measure it it's more than the other one how much is it four millimeters that's one millimeter more than the CPU board and this is quite impressive oh and it is very heavy also so I think that's about it nice shot here this will probably be the the, thumb, the thumbnail picture for that video three two one goodbye oops i almost forgot something i prepared for today uh, after the most expensive cpu i also have the most expensive cable this one comes from a sgi origin uh, 2000 computer it is something that was made in the year 19 90, 1995, something about that. Um, this cable here, oh, in fact, it's two cables, each a little bit more than a meter long. Uh, they cost $50,000. Well, I'm not sure if it's 50000 each or the pair of them, but according to the price list from SGI uh, as you have to pay fifty thousand dollars for these cables and uh, of course I kept these two cables just for fun and to show some people uh, I have opened one of the connectors because I want to see what inside what is inside to uh, to be so expensive it's just a aluminium shell here two screws as you know it from other connectors uh, it looks a little bit like an old SCSI connector maybe it is something like that um, it is potted here with some yellowish plastic stuff and you can see there are uh, individual cables uh, I'd say it's shielded twisted pair some sort of that Twinox or however you you call it and I guess this is hand soldered by nude virgins at full moon uh, because I don't know how they get the price tag of $50,000 because even if I would do it by hand I think in a couple of hours it should be possible to make such a cables such a cable and well uh, fifty thousand dollars for a day of work mm, not too bad not too bad